Om Namah Shivaya Om Namah Shivaya Vikalpa Tara Bhava Bhyama Sang Sprishtatma Vastuni Vikalpi Tattva Lakshya Tva Sambandha Dhyastu Kalpita The self is untouched by doubts about the presence or absence of associates, connotations, and other adventitious relationships because they are superimposed on it phenomenally. Text 53. Ittang vakyaista dartanu sandhanang shravanang bhavet yuktya sambhavati tvanu sandhanang mananantu tat. The finding out or discovery of the true significance of the identity of the individual self and the Supreme, with the aid of the great sayings, like tattvamasi, is what is known as shravana, and to arrive at the possibility of its validity through logical reasoning is what is called manana. In the understanding of the great identity, three stages are involved. One, shravana, hearing with faith and reverence the pertinent passages and trying to understand their meaning. Two, manana, finding logical support for their validity. The third stage will be explained in the next shloka. Text 54. Tabhyang nirvichitikshirte chetasas tapitasya yat ekatanatva metadhi nididhyasanamuchyate And when by shravana and manana the mind develops a firm and undoubted conviction and dwells constantly on the thus ascertained self alone. It is called unbroken meditation, nididhyasana. See chapter 7, 280 and 105 to 129. In Yoga Sutra 329, nididhyasana is called dhyana and has been described as Pratyaya ekatanata dhyanam, unbroken knowledge of the object of meditation. Namaste. So this is the key. Yes, there is logic involved. There is reasoning involved in the process of self-realization. But it is only one of three stages. The first stage, shravana, is critical. Without an accurate duplication of the original teaching, one cannot move forward into manana or analytical reasoning about it without making some logical mistake. This is where everybody gets tripped up. They think that reading the scriptures in a surface way, without going deeply into the meaning of each and every word, will give them the understanding, but it won't. You have to go into the meaning and derivation of each word, preferably going back to the original Sanskrit. And this is one reason why I'm not covering the logical derivations of the previous three shlokas that we did last time because it's so easy to make a mistake if you have not perfectly duplicated the meaning of the scripture. What do I mean by that? Well, we went over this 10, 12 years ago in one of the original series on becoming genius, or sometimes we call it matrix learning, derived from the Buddha's statement, 
that actual mindfulness is defined as controlled attention within a matrix. And what is the matrix? The teaching. The meanings of the words, the ontology, the system of meanings that are related to each other through the mutual definition of the terminology. So if you go back and clear all of the vague understandings and get a completely clear analytical understanding of the meanings of the words, then you're in a position to move on to the second stage of manana. But if you don't do that, you will get hopelessly bogged down in manana and not be able to complete the process. What is the completion of manana? A mental model of the structure of Brahman, the individual self, the mind and intelligence, the world, the creation, maya, and everything that we've been talking about for many years now. That mental model must be good enough to actually predict what is going to happen with the different changes in consciousness. So in most cases, people don't have a sufficiently accurate mental model because, again, the terminology is not understood clearly. One should be able to recite the definition of every single term. Otherwise, you don't know what it means. That's so obvious. It's like, I understood this already back in high school. If you can't recite the definition of a term, you don't know what it means. And that applies not only to technical terminology, such as, you know, Atman, Brahman, Maya, and so on like that, but also to ordinary words, especially the small common relationship words like the, an, the, thus, that, which, of, out, in, for, and so on and so on and so on. So we are trying to get this through to you so that you can reach the third stage, Nididhyasana, where one is in unbroken meditation on the truth revealed in the scriptures. So the way you get this is by having a mental model of the whole subject matter that is so robust it allows you to predict what's going to happen with any little change. Well, this also includes your physiology. If you eat too much or don't eat enough or don't eat the right foods, it can disturb your mental functioning. It can actually decrease your intelligence. Conversely, eating a good balanced diet and sufficient quantity will increase your intelligence and memory and allow you to do much better, much clearer work in the realm of meditation. So this is why all aspects of the yogic lifestyle, including celibacy, austerity, proper nutrition, exercise and sleep, the correct learning, the deep understanding of the terminology, the creation of a mental model by reasoning, and every little detail in the sadhu's life is an important factor in their attaining final realization. Gnosis, the plenary experience, the enlightenment experience, in which one realizes, I am Brahman, aham brahmasmi, tattvamasi, Thou art that. So that, meaning Brahman, is inexplicable, unrelated to anything, beyond words and symbols, beyond concepts. The only way to understand it is to realize it in oneself, that I am that Brahman. I am the conscious being. I am 
that which creates the entire universe, which is, of course, consciousness. So the self is not a doer. The self is only a witness. All the actions are carried out by the modes of material nature which is another thing you have to understand in detail. Goodness, passion, and ignorance, and their interactions, their symptoms, and their results. Because the mode of goodness can be defined as those qualities and activities that lead toward enlightenment. The mode of passion can be understood as unlimited desires and passionate activities leading to suffering. And the mode of ignorance can be defined as lethargy, laziness, stupidity, <laughs> leading to taking birth in the animal realm. So these are the modes of nature, and one should gradually school oneself, train oneself, so that all one's activities are in goodness. One should become a sannyasi or other type of renunciant and let go of materialistic goals as far as possible, keeping only the minimum needed to maintain the body. And this is the sadhu life. This is the life that leads toward actual enlightenment. It is not that you can keep both going at the same time, the materialistic life and the spiritual life. No, you have to choose one or the other, or you will fail at both. This was described in Bhagavad Gita by Arjuna. He says, what if you give up the material life for the spiritual life, but then you fail to attain enlightenment? Then aren't you just driven out of every sphere? Aren't you complete failure in both areas of life? And Krishna reassures him that no, whatever you do on this path, its effects are eternal and are carried with you to the next life, even if you don't attain moksha. Even if you have to be born again, you will be born in a much better situation where it will be much easier to revive and continue the disciplines and the knowledge of your previous life. So don't skimp on this effort to attain enlightenment. Don't compromise. Don't try to split your efforts between material and spiritual life. That is not going to be satisfactory in either respect. But really, put all your eggs in one basket. <laughs> Brahman is the unlimited host from which everything else arises. How it does that is very mysterious and actually incomprehensible. So don't try to figure it all out. Just make Brahman the object of your contemplation, your thoughts, your feelings, your efforts, your plans, your possessions. Everything that you have any control over should be directed towards realization of Brahman. Then everything you do in life will further you even the smallest thing, because it's performed in the right context that leads to ultimate self-realization. Aum Tat Sat, Aum Shakti Aum, Aum Namah Shivaya.